so much by the way thank you so much for being here yeah thank you so much for having it's me it is so good to be here I, yeah. It's such a beautiful song and, and I actually enjoy it. I mean, it's no surprise. I mean, you get 100 million streams <laughs> over the past 12 months. Was yes, it? it's been absolutely crazy. The support, especially from my Indonesian fans, has just been yeah. amazing to see and it makes me so happy to finally be here as well. Definitely. <laughs> so this is not your first time, not your first rodeo in Indonesia, <laughs> of course, uh, but it is your first time coming to Jakarta and yes. we know that you have a jam-packed busy schedule. Yeah. Thank you so much for making the effort to come here, Thank you for having singing me. your song and of course being here with us. Uh, again, how do you feel coming here to Indonesia? We know that you have your meet and greet. Yes. That's coming up tomorrow. Yes, it's tomorrow. I'm so excited to finally be here, you know, starting my career kind of in the middle of the pandemic. I okay. haven't really had a chance to get out of Australia and to really meet my fans mm -hmm. um, face to face. And I'm just so grateful to have fans from other countries around the world. Yeah. So it feels so good to be here. Yeah, and your new Scars is the first, I mean, it's a new one, it's a new single. Yes. And now it hits 1 million in just 10 days in YouTube. <laughs> I mean, just mind blowing. You captivated you. the whole world now. <laughs> so can you tell us more about this song though? Yeah, so Scars was inspired by my current relationship. Current I'm, relationship, yes. okay. It's ongoing right now. Yes, so <laughs> I, I'm in my very first serious relationship and, you know, 
A lot of people think that Scars, the title, is a heartbreak song, but <laughs> when you really read into the lyrics, it's actually a love song. Okay, and yes. And it's kind of talking about, you know, I'm kind of scared to be vulnerable. I think that being vulnerable and letting someone in can be a really scary thing. Right. But when you find the special person, it makes it all worth it. So that's where the line, loving you is worth all the scars came from. Right. It's kind of saying, you know, we may get hurt along the way. We may, you know, make mistakes and stuff like that. But if it's with you, then I'm willing to kind of work <laughs> through it and it's all worth it. I can it. see the love in the eyes. Right? <laughs> it's perfect. It turns fire. I mean, I'm looking at the lyrics and I, I, if, I, if I may read re some of it, no, I won't run away even if you tear me apart. You know I will always stay. Yeah. It's better to try and love too hard right. than to always stuck, uh, stuck at the start. I mean, <laughs> and then yes. the, the scars. Uh, tell me, tell me, um, what um, I found some of the words are poetic. What what kind of feeling would you want to convey to listeners? Yeah, I really kind of when I was writing the song, I had my girlfriend in mind, and I was kind of just thinking about our relationship. She's actually Indonesian, also. Oh, Fun fact. oh really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, I was kind of thinking about our relationship, and I've realized that you know when you're with someone for so long, mm -hmm. you learn a lot of lessons along the way yes. and you know there's a lot of love there even though there may be some tough times throughout it um, so really through the lyrics I really want listeners to kind of think about their loved ones right. and you know it doesn't have to be a romantic relationship it could be about you know a friend I've seen people on TikTok relate it to their friends and their family and stuff but it's really right. about kind of thinking about those special people in your life and really holding on tight to them yeah, and you know, it, it seems right now, especially in the younger generation, it seems there's a lot of songs that talks about heartache, oh, heartache, right? Yeah. Then they're going to more of like a darker space. Yes. So it's good that you're bringing back the love <laughs> and how it's supposed to be in relationship. It takes, you know, it takes yeah. effort. It yeah. takes <laughs> the hard work and whatnot, but that's what it takes to, as a relationship. But we want to know more about you too, Keenan. Yeah. I mean, you were saying that actually you established yourself during the pandemic and whatnot, yeah. but how long have you been knowing that this is what you want to do? I mean, you also uh, write all your songs, yes. correct? Yes. So, you know, you're a songwriter, you're also singing and whatnot. What really made you think that, okay, this is the time for me to shine. This is my time for me to yeah. like showcase my arts and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, I have dreamt about being an artist ever since I was like two years old. Okay, so, so it's in you. It's, I feel like it just comes naturally to me. I feel like I've always been surrounded by music and I've always loved singing and I've done like guitar lessons, piano lessons. Okay. Like I've done every music thing under the sun. I've done it. <laughs> um, so I've always really known that this was what I really wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't until I kind of jumped on TikTok and kind of just started posting random videos and I was really lucky to kind of go viral overnight. Um, and once I kind of saw that there were people that cared about my singing and yeah. my music, I started teasing some songs that I had written because before that, I kept it all to myself and it was just kind of like a hobby. Right. Um, so I teased my first song in April of 2021. Mm -hmm. and. The response from that was just incredible. The song was dependent and it went number one here in Indonesia. Yeah. It was just, it was so surreal to see so much love coming from a country that I had never been to. Right. Um, but yeah, I've always known that this is what I wanted to do. And I think people kind of see, you know, my career being so crazy over the last two years, um, but people don't see the years and years of hard work and practice right. that has gone into this. Right. Um, I think it's really easy to be like, oh, he blew up overnight, like right. it came easily. But, you know, I did piano lessons for 12 years. Mm -hmm. I did guitar lessons for six. I did sing lessons for five years. So it's, there's been a lot of time and right. hard work that's been put into this. You've done your deeds. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it was interesting that you mentioned TikTok. I mean, like nowadays, like all, uh, everything's mm -hmm. di digital. Like how, did you plan to be, to go viral on TikTok? Or is that <laughs> just something that you just, I just want to, put it out there and see what happens or yeah, how well, was the story there? It was kind of by accident. I downloaded TikTok, you know, at the start of the pandemic when everyone was kind of jumping on it. Yeah. And I never planned to post anything. Mm -hmm. But then as the pandemic got longer, I got more and more bored. I ran out of things to do. So I filmed a few singing videos and just posted them. And I was really lucky that they went viral overnight. Right. Um, but then from that moment, it became really strategic. Mm -hmm. And I was posting like seven or eight videos every day right. to oh, wow. kind of just get myself out there as much as I could because I knew that 
the end goal for me was to be an artist. Right. Um, so I really wanted to be strategic in how I was approaching TikTok. Um, I was studying business at the time, so I feel like that kind of helped. Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, it started off kind of just seeing where it goes, but then once I realized that there were people that cared, it became really thought out and planned. Right, it came from a hobby to a passion to now where it becomes a part of you. It's a, it's a huge part of yes. you now. I mean, you were saying, you know, if we're seeing that social media plays a big part, especially in the music industry or entertainment industry itself, how would you say that, um, you know, this platform really does help, you know, people or an artist just like you? Yeah, I think that now more than ever, mm -hmm. artists have an amazing platform to just share their music for free. Yeah. Um, you can literally, it, it's insane to me to think that I can post a video and reach millions of people just like that. Right. So, um, and I think that it's an amazing tool to kind of connect with people around yes. the world. Um, and I feel like, you know, the pandemic forced us to be creative in how we connected with people. So um, social media has really become like an amazing tool for artists to share what they're working on. I always tease music um, that I'm not meant to show people, but I just like post it anyway <laughs> because I've created this community of new friends. Right. Um, and I think that it's just been an amazing way to kind of get to know people and for them to get to know me. Right, well. it's like a genuine relationship that you have. But if yes. we look back in the past, it seems musicians or artists of those days, they need to knock on doors on right. label <laughs> records, right? right? For, yeah. for them to even hear the song. But nowadays, I think everything is just much more easier. Yeah. But how would you say as an artist that you should not over abuse? This, because we know you see a lot of people popping up here and there and whatnot. Yeah. But I love the story that you share to your friends and also to the whole world that, you know, it's not an easy process for me to be here where, where I am right now. Yeah. Because I already did I already did my deeds back then and whatnot. Yes. Yeah, I think that kind of just knowing your audience really well is something that I have had to learn. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the, it is very possible to kind of post too much mm -hmm. um, and share too much. So I think also having a really great support system around you, um, my family and my girlfriend are not afraid to humble me. And especially, <laughs> especially my younger brothers, they are not afraid to tell me if something doesn't sound good or whatever. So oh. I think it's kind of just being really um, grounded and also right. being really strategic. Yes. I think, um, you know, social media looks like it's very spontaneous. Um, I know like my TikTok, it looks like, you know, I kind of just, jumped out of bed and decided to film a video, mm -hmm. but um, I've actually kind of planned out every piece of content that I right. put out. So I think it's being really strategic and smart about what you're posting. You're doing everything, content yeah. creator, <laughs> artist, songwriter, I mean, everything. <laughs> multi-talented multi right there. You learn about the music beforehand and now he, he's studying business you, you mentioned earlier. Yeah, so <laughs> as soon as I graduated high school, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Mm. I mean, I knew that I wanted to be an artist, but I didn't know how I was going to achieve that goal. Yes. Because um, TikTok wasn't a thing at the time. No. So I jumped into a business degree and kind of studied marketing um, and like social media, and I feel like that really weirdly helped okay. me with my <laughs> right. music career yes. without me even realizing. So everything happens for a reason. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now this a scar song. I mean, like I, I can see myself driving and enjoying the song, but yeah. like how? Do, what the, what distinguishes uh, different from your other song, which is uh, "Never Let You Go"? Yes. Um, I think Scars is the start of a new era for me. Mm -hmm. um, I actually re have released a lot of, you know, heartbreak songs and songs about missing people, but I feel like I'm in my love song era now and we're kind of, it's kind of reflecting where I'm at currently mm -hmm. as well. Um, I think it's also a new sound. I feel like it's, Scars is a lot more upbeat compared to my other like piano yes. ballads and stuff. Yeah. Um, so I'm just really excited that the song's finally out and the response has just been incredible. Do you think that you will hop to other genres too? I think, you know, I grew up listening to so many different genres. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm always open to kind of exploring new right. sounds and stuff. Yes. And, you know, I'm very early in my career yeah. and I'm very early in being an artist. So I feel like I have a lot of learning to do and a lot yeah. of 
evolving. <laughs> yeah, I cannot wait for that. Uh, I cannot wait for Dangdut version. <laughs> uh, are you familiar with Dangdut yet? No. Oh, okay, uh, we have to make you listen to that one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, the music videos for Scars coming out. Yes. To, it, uh, it comes out on the 8th of March. On the 8th. And yes. mind giving a glimpse of what, what it's going to look like? Yes. Try, so or? it was my very first music video shoot ever. Okay. Oh. Um, and Congrats. Thank you. It was so much fun to work with a full team and we shot it over a few locations, um, all in the one day as well, which was super hectic, but we got it done. Yeah. Um, the music video, I feel like, is a really kind of nostalgic feel. Mm -hmm. um, I really wanted to capture the overall kind of um, emotion of the song in the video. So I'm just so excited for everyone to see it. Definitely, um, it's coming very soon. Yes, yeah, really, really soon. I can't believe it's March already. Uh, yeah, it's very fast. <laughs> and you went to, for your trip this time, you went to Singapore, Philippines, and also now to Indonesia. Um, yes. How has it been so far? Now you're traveling, you meet with your fans. Yes. And what's upcoming next from you? Yeah, it's been amazing to be able to finally meet my fans in person. Yeah. Um, it's been so much fun to also visit the countries as well. It's such beautiful countries. Yes. And the food and the culture is just something that I absolutely love and I can't wait to come back. Um, I definitely will be back for tour really okay. soon. Okay. So um, we're in the process of planning a tour across Asia, which I'm really excited for. Mm -hmm. um, and I also have my very first EP coming this oh, year. So yeah, it's coming. Thank you, thank you. It's coming in the middle of the year. Okay, um, can and you spill it a little bit? It <laughs> <laughs> you like to give a little yeah. preview, I know, right, all the yeah. Um, it's uh, Yeah, my first EP, I'm really excited to put, put out a full body of work. Okay. Um, and I really want to take the listeners on a journey of stories and emotions. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be kind of a, f a group of songs that kind of reflect different emotions that you feel growing up and okay. just oh. being a human. Like, yes. I think all the songs, you know, I write all my songs as you were saying mm -hmm. before, so they're all based on my own experiences or things that I've felt in the past or whatever. I feel like songwriting is so therapeutic for me. Yeah. So it's kind of like my little diary. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited for the EP to come out. And definitely when we hear your song, it seems like we're unraveling the story of you, of yeah. Kenan. <laughs> yes. Cannot wait for that. <laughs> all right, guys. So remember that mid of this year, right? Yes. Yes. Cannot wait for that one. Well, Kenan, thank you for thank very much you. for being on the show, so man. Good luck for tomorrow. Thank you. We're thank definitely going to be there and cheer you on. Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> all right.